Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here. In this video, I want to go over one of the rows of my bookshelf. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these books. Okay, this book here is pretty cool. This is Topics in Ring Theory by Barche. This is meant to be used to teach graduate students in math uh, in ring theory. So even though it's a grad book though, it is an introductory book. Um, if you're looking for a ring theory book, this one's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty lightweight book too uh, as well, so it's easy to carry around. This next book is another ring theory book, and it's by Gordon. This is a much bigger book. Um, really, really hefty book here, also graduate level, and significantly more advanced uh, than the Barche book. I've mainly used this book uh, as a reference, and it's certainly a good one. Okay, so this next book is a really famous book, and it's the book on abstract algebra by the one and only Israel Nathan Herstein. It's called Topics in Algebra. I had this friend in graduate school who absolutely worshipped Israel's work. Uh, coincidentally, Israel and I <laughs> went to the same graduate school for mathematics. I always wonder, uh, when I was in grad school, you know, did I ever sit in the same chair that uh, he sat in? He passed away many years ago, and uh, Israel was not only a good writer, but he was a good teacher, and this is an extremely famous book. Again, the book is Topics in Algebra by Israel Nathan Herstein. This next book was actually a gift. This is also a book on abstract algebra. It's called Introduction to Abstract Algebra, and it's by Roy Dubish. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, at work gave this to me several years ago. This is a very, very uh, introductory level book, definitely undergrad level, uh, very, very beginner book for abstract algebra. This next book is the famous book by Galleon. This is Contemporary Abstract Algebra by Joseph Galleon. Um, this book is a beginner book. However, it's more of an advanced beginner book in the sense that it contains more knowledge than, say, the book by you know, Dubish. I had a friend in New Zealand who used this book for his course when he was an undergrad, and he has his PhD now. And he's the one who introduced me to, to this beautiful book. Uh, this book uh, is a book of examples. I feel like it has more examples than other beginner books on abstract algebra. Again, it's contemporary abstract algebra, and the author is Joseph Galleon. Okay, this book is one of my favorite because it's probably written by one of my favorite authors. This is probably one of my favorite. It's Lang. So this is the Lang book on linear algebra. I've read big portions of this book. Um, I used it as a reference when I was studying linear algebra as an undergrad. So I've owned this book uh, for many, many years. Again, it's Linear Algebra by the famous Serge Lang. And we have another linear algebra book. This is written by the late Paul Halmos, who was a famous Hungarian mathematician. The book is called Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces, and this is also a classic. You know, Paul Halmos always said that whenever he was learning a new subject, he would gather as many resources and do as many examples as possible. And it's one of the reasons that I have so many books. It's because I feel that having more resources is always better than having less resources. This next one is a problem book. It's written by Zhang. It's linear algebra. This is a book of linear algebra problems, challenging problems for students by Fuzhen Zhang. Yeah, it's a pretty cool book. I've done some of the problems from this book, uh, but not too many. So uh, it's a problem book on linear algebra. Here we have another linear algebra book. This is Introduction to Linear Algebra by Alan Tucker. I feel like I've had this book forever. This is probably one of the first books uh, on linear algebra that I purchased. And I'll be honest, I think this is an okay book. Uh, again, it's written by Alan Tucker, and apparently he teaches at, or taught, at the University of Stony Brook. I felt like uh, it was a good book, but it was very different, and uh, it didn't really go well with what I was learning in my class. Finally, we're away from the algebra books, and they're not in any particular order. In fact, I often rearrange my books. Um, this is uh, Advanced Calculus by Kaplan. This is one of those big, big, big advanced calculus books. It kind of reminds me of the Taylor book. It's just got a lot of mathematics. You can spend a lifetime 
uh, reading a book like this. This next book is a book on boundary value problems. That's right, an entire book on boundary value problems. And it's written by Powers. This is a very applied math book. It's full of applications. It talks about Fourier series, etc. Again, it's boundary value problems by David Powers. Uh, I'll be honest, I have not spent much time um, using this book. I bought this book when I was taking differential equations many years ago, hoping to use it as a reference, uh, but it was way more advanced than what I was learning in my undergraduate class. So it has been sitting here for a while. I probably should resurrect it and uh, take some time to look at it. Okay, I can't see the title and I, I think I know what this is. This is, I think, the most expensive book I have. Yep, I don't know if you can see it. This is Advanced Calculus by Woods. This book, oh, there it is. <laughs> this book is worth hundreds of dollars. And the cool thing, the thing that makes me feel cool about this book is that I got this book for like $5 on, on the internet years ago. So the reason this book is worth so much money is because one, I guess it's rare, but it's because Richard Feynman said that he taught himself calculus using this book. So Richard Feynman was a famous physicist, and so I guess he, you know, kind of made this book popular, and that's why the prices are, are so expensive. It's actually a really good book. This is actually an excellent book on advanced calculus. This next book is written by one of my favorite authors, by the legendary Serge Lang. Serge Lang was prolific in writing books, and this is one of his books. This is the analysis book by Serge Lang. A lot of people uh, don't like the way that Lang writes. I've heard things from people, uh, you know, on the street, well, in, in math buildings, and <laughs> they say that, you know, because because he wrote a lot of books, he didn't put a lot of effort into them. I don't know that. I don't know if that's true. I, I think Serge Lang is a great writer, and I feel like I understand what he reads, and to me. That makes him a good writer, regardless of how many books he wrote. Um, the man uh, is a legend in my eyes. So this is a random differential equations book. It looks like Borelli and Coleman. I used this book uh, when I was taking differential equations as a source of extra practice problems. And if I remember correctly, um, this book is easier than the book that I use to teach differential equations today. So it's a beginner book but it doesn't have as many exercises as, for example, the Zill book or the Saff and Snyder book. Again, it's Differential Equations uh, by Borelli and Coleman. Uh, it's a beginner book on differential equations. This is an advanced book on real and functional analysis, and I believe this is part B. Yes, so it's part B, which is on functional analysis. I believe part A is on real analysis, I do not own um, the first part, so uh, it's written by uh, Mukherjee and Podhoven. It's a very, very adva advanced book, uh, graduate level for sure. I have only used this book briefly as a reference, uh, mainly when I was uh, in graduate school. And it's been sitting here for, for quite some time. This next book is not even a math book. It's just an old book on electricity, Basic Electricity, Volume 2. And it's written by uh, Valkenberg, Nuger, and Neville. I actually got this um, at a garage sale for like 50 cents. Um, I thought, wow, okay, it's, it's almost like math, right? It's electricity, and it's only 50 cents, so <laughs> let me pick it up. So it's been sitting here on my bookshelf. I actually have not looked at this book. I usually spend most of my time uh, with math books. I've only glanced through it. It's got some funny pictures, really old school, old school book. This next book I spent a lot of time reading. It's the book by Wackerly, Mendelhall, and Schaefer. It's Mathematical Statistics with Applications. Um, it reads okay, but the most important thing about this book is the knowledge that it contains and the exercises. This is an excellent book on mathematical statistics. It is extremely comprehensive. Uh, it's also an extremely popular book. This is typically used to teach uh, mathematical statistics at various schools. I use this for two courses as an undergraduate, Statistical Theory 1 and Statistical Theory 2. So it's calculus-based um, statistics. It contains a wealth of information. If you're looking to get into mathematical statistics, I highly suggest you pick up an older copy of this book. Uh, this is one I highly recommend, mainly because it's so comprehensive and it has a lot of mathematics uh, in it. 
This next book I spent a great deal of time reading as well. It's the book by Kreisig. It's on functional analysis. This is an amazing book. I actually use this for a course in graduate school on functional analysis. And I read a big portion of the book and I was extremely happy with the book. Now, as a disclaimer, I should mention that when I read this book, I had already had, you know, a lot of math under my belt. I remember some of my classmates uh, struggled and, and I helped them and I made some good friends uh, in that class. But the book is uh, Functional Analysis by Kreisig, a very, very good book on functional analysis. This next book is just iconic. It's the book by Hoffman and Kunz, Linear Algebra. I mean, this is just an absolute legend of a book. Um, just one of the classics. I mean, if you study mathematics, I feel like this is a must-have. It's like, um, I'm trying to think of a comparison for people who read. It's like the Mark Twain of mathematics, or maybe not. Uh, but it's a really, really good book. Um, and if you're trying to learn linear algebra, this gives a very concise and rigorous and elegant treatment on linear algebra. So again, it's the Hoffman and Kunz book on linear algebra. I'll try to do a full review on this book at some point in the near future. So here we have something that we haven't seen so far on this bookshelf. It's a partial differential equations book. Um, this is really, a, you know, applied math here. Uh, this is the book by Strauss. I used this book for a course that was called Applied Boundary Value Problems 1. That was the name of the course. I believe since then they've changed the name of the course, and the course that I, that I use this book for is called Partial Differential Equations, as is the book. This is a pretty good book. Um, I had trouble reading some of the sections in the book. Uh, one of my biggest complaints with this book was the solutions in the back. A lot of them were incorrect. So I remember spending hours trying to figure out why I was wrong. And it wasn't me. It was, it was the book. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, it's a pretty good book. And it feels really good. It's almost like a little, uh, it's like a little Bible almost. It's just really, really a nice little book. This next book is a topology book by Mendelssohn. Uh, this is an old school book on topology. Um, I use this book as a reference. So when I was taking topology as an undergrad, I bought this book for a few dollars as a supplement. I ended up reading some of the sections to help uh, you know, re reinforce my knowledge. However, I was fortunate enough to have a really good topology instructor. So um, this book uh, was not that helpful. This is actually another mathematical statistics book. I actually took uh, three courses on mathematical statistics. This is the one uh, by Rice. This is the India edition. It's a pretty good book. I think this one reads a little bit better than the one we saw earlier than, than this one here. However, um, I, I, I do like this one better. And I think it's because the exercises in this one uh, had answers in the back of the book. And I also had a student solutions manual when I was taking this course. When I took this course, I didn't have that student solutions manual, and I just felt like the exercises were, maybe they were just a little bit harder. Um, it wasn't the same, but this book reads better. So like the explanations in this book are better, but the exercises uh, are not. Finally, we get to one of the Shams books. This is Shams' Outline of Advanced Calculus. And it does say advanced calculus, um, but if you're looking for like a real analysis book, um, this is really not it. I mean, it does have some proofs, uh, but it's certainly not as rigorous as you would expect uh, with the name. So if you're taking like a course in college on analysis or advanced calculus and you buy this book, you might be a little bit disappointed. Um, it doesn't have as many proofs uh, as I would have liked. Nevertheless, it's a really good book and it does contain a lot of a lot of calculus. This next book is extremely old and extremely interesting. It's called Treatise on Integral Calculus, and it's written by Edwards. This is volume two. I do not own volume one. Um, volume one was available for purchase when I picked this up at an estate sale, and I made the mistake of not buying it. And to this day, I, I, I regret it a little bit. This book is in almost mint condition. Um, it's an amazing calculus book. And it actually cites its exercises. Uh, like you can see citations for the problems. Like it gives you the source uh, for who discovered the problem in the solution. Really, really old school, hardcore treatment of integral calculus. 
This one is not really a math book. It's called The Moscow Puzzles. This was a gift. Uh, it says 359 mathematical recreations. So it's got little puzzles and stuff uh, for math. It's a pretty fun book, uh, but it's not really like a textbook as all of the other ones we've seen so far. This was a gift uh, that I received uh, a long time ago. Kind of a fun, fun problem. The Moscow Puzzles. And the very last one, it's Basic Algebra by Knapp. I remember I took this book uh, to work once and I was sitting in my office and someone walks in, they go, oh, basic algebra, are you teaching, you know, basic algebra? I said, no, 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 this is, this is abstract algebra. Uh, this is actually a graduate level book on abstract algebra, so don't let the name uh, basic algebra fool you. It's a pretty good book, and I did use this for a course on abstract algebra in graduate school. It's basic algebra by Knapp. So that's it. That's this entire row of the bookshelf. I'm always... Uh, rearranging my books and I have some books on another bookshelf that I need to rearrange uh, but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video take care